This is a time we need to ascend. We not only need to press through. Many people want to just put their head down and press through. No, the Lord is saying lift your head and come up hither. Not in pride. Lift your eyes to the hill from which comes your help. Every day you don't get what you've done, he showed you mercy. And it's new every day. And you dare worship anyone but him. And by him I mean Jesus. Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, Yahweh, the only living God. Good day, beloved, and thank you for joining me again today on Preach, Be a Voice, Not an Echo. For those of you who do not know me, I am Ambassador Chantrell Davis. Today is May the 23rd of 2019. It is 2.22 p.m. Central Standard Time. Bring your hearts and mind in one accord together with me in prayer. There is no time and there is no space. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you that I'm alive for such a time as this. Father, I thank you because I awaked because you sustained me. And all those who hear this message, Father God, they awaked because you sustained them, Father God. Be exalted, be lifted higher, for you are the high and lofty one. Father God, you are the one who strengthens and sustains. You guard and you guide, Father God. You beautify the meek. You are our strong tower, our strong defense, the rock of ages, the lily of the valley, Father God. You are the unprecedented, unparalleled, Father God, unchangeable God, and the only living God, Father God. I thank you for your wisdom, your truth, your light your love, your liberty, your peace, your wisdom, for you are love in its only true form and you are the only living God, Father God. We receive from you this day, Father God. We believe your words and therefore we speak them, Father God. Be exalted, Father God. Be lifted higher in and through us this day, Father God, by your word, Father God. Help us to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father God is the speaker of this house this day. I yield to the speaker of my physical house. That is the Holy Spirit, Father God. Have your way in and through me, Father God. Move through me to get to others this day. I yield, Father God, in the name of Christ Jesus, for I know that all things I do is by your power and by your might, Father God. Let no one exalt me above measure through any revelation or any word, Father God. I move forth in obedience and spirit and in truth, Father God. And I look to you and your grace, Father God, to minister to the needs, Father God. I prophesy even over my own mouth, Father God. I love my mouth full of grace seasoned with salt that I know how to answer every man, Father God. I prophesy the tongue of the learned, the lips of knowledge, Father God. Right words in due season I speak, Father God, and how forcible are these right words. I thank you that by your grace I have an unction from the Holy One and I do know all things, Father God. I ask for you to fill us, Father God, with the knowledge of your will and our wisdom and spiritual understanding. Help us to walk worthy of you, Lord, unto all pleasing. Help us to be fruitful in every good work, work and increase in the knowledge of God. Strengthen us with all might according to your glorious power unto all patience and long suffering. With joyfulness, Father God, give to us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you, Father God, that the eyes of our understanding remain enlightened, Father God. We pray for your wisdom, for you said you give it to all men liberally, and we rebuke all earthly, central, and devilish wisdom, Father God. I plead the blood of Jesus over my heart, my will, and emotion, and all those who will hear this word this day in sincerity and truth. I plead the blood of Jesus and appropriate it, Father God, to the full binding up and dispossessing of all darkness, Father God, to the clarifying of minds, Father God, to the healing of soul wounds, Father God, to the breaking of chains and breaking of soul ties, Father God, to the recovering of souls, Father God, and recovering of minds that are scattered. In the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Blood, Father God, that they be renewed in the spirit of their mind, Father God. In the name of Jesus, that they walk forth with the mind of Christ, holding the thoughts, feelings, and purposes of his heart, Father God. We are renewed in our spirit. We are read up, Father God, in you. We are regenerated, Father God. We are renewed, Father God. We are revived, Father God, in you, Father God. And we are not separate from you. For you said it is not in us to know our own ways, Father God. You thank you, Father God, that you said you made us and you were burned, Father God. And we think that you burned us up in your hand. And no one takes us from your hand, Father God. I thank you for your word, Father God, that you are the lifter up of our head, Father God. I thank you that you contend with those who contend with us. You fight against those who fight against us. And you see the righteous thing, the great tribulation to our trouble. So I decree and declare, Father God, as the speaker and the minister, Father God, your in, a servant in this earth, Father God, but your daughter, Father God. I decree and declare that every tongue that is uttered, muttered, and chanted, any tongue, any language, any realm, Father God, against this ministry, against our mind, against our marriage, against our destiny, our productivity, Father God, and you, our influence, Father God, our momentum. I decree and declare those words back into the bosom of the one who sent them, Father God. And and let those words return upon them as fire and brimstone and in their bosom, Father God, as fiery arrows from the Lord, dipped in the blood of Jesus, that they be tormented day and night, Father God. I decree and declare, Father God, that no weapon formed against us will prosper and every tongue rising against us in judgment. I condemn it right now in the name of Christ Jesus. I set loose the innumerable company of angels, Father God, that we have on our behalf. They are ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those of us who are as of salvation. They are our occupying army, Father God, and you have told us to occupy until you return. So, Father God, occupy, Father God. Not just our territory, Father God, but the reach to occupy this ministry and occupy 
occupy all those who would hurt this ministry, Father God, for there is no time and there is no space, Father God. It is as I speak, Father God, according to your word. You have spoken it and I believe it in the name of Christ Jesus, Father God. I thank you, Father God. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, Father God, that any person, place, or anything, or entity, or action, Father God, in any realm that has become a burden in our life, Father God, I decree and declare it is removed. Any person, place, or thing, or action in any realm that has become a yoke about our neck, I decree and declare it is destroyed by fire, Father God. Let the fire find them. Let the fire of the anointing find them. I decree and declare their way is stopped, their way is shot. For we suffer witches and warlocks not to live, Father God. We suffer them not to breathe. We suffer them, Father God, not to be in progressive mode, Father God. In the name of Jesus, we suffer them not to be energized, Father God. And we thank you that the mouth of the Lord has spoken this, Father God. Do it for your holy name's sake, for your word's sake, Father God. For we know you are faithful and just to perform your words. You hasten to perform them, Father God. And they will not return unto you void, Father God. I pray according unto your will, Father God. I cover this prayer, Father God, sealing it with the blood of Christ Jesus, Father God. Thanking you, Father God, that what I have decreed in faith is done, Father God. I bless you with my life, Father God. I draw grace and strength from you this day. I trust in you, Father God. In the name of Christ Jesus, I seal this prayer and I say amen. Okay, I'm going to do a short message after this because hopefully some of you will join me. I don't know if you remember, I started doing it in 2017, the J1 to J1 from June 1st to July 1st where I'm off social media and you make sure you take in clean information and well, no social media. The only social media I had was when I did marathon messages, whether it's the Bible, whether it was listening to the own word that the Lord gave me or other pastors and teachers that rightly divide the word. I flooded myself with the word and with the Bible and even though I still watch some television, I just came off of social media for those 30 days. So I'm going to invite some of you to join me because there was an amazing revelation and growth and closeness and just basking in the Lord with that attention. Uh, you will be quite shocked at how he honors uh, how you draw close to him. He said, you draw nigh unto me and I would draw, I would draw nigh unto you. Before I go into this message, okay? I know many are going to be offended and I don't care. I, I want you to look me in my eyes. I don't care. I heard the Lord as sure as I heard my name. And it is not the first time, okay, uh, that he has shown me this. I told you many people like to attack or so-called do corrective messages because they have no temperance and they call everything righteous indignation. The Lord is slow to anger. So if everything's setting you off, that's you. Okay. Just like when I delivered titles, it was over and over and over again. And I felt them and felt them until the flame hit and you deliver this and you correct this now. Then the anger of the Lord was kindled. It is not all the time. Immediately. People are moving out of their own flesh. You cannot do that. What did I tell you? The right word in due season. How forcible it is. Why must you say what the Lord tell you to say and only what he tell you to say and when he tell you to say it? Because you will bring forth the most fruit. You, it, it, then they will be able to receive it because he's been over there working on them anyway. So when you deliver the word he gives you at the right time, it would be the, at its most effective. That is the enemy's job is to get you out of time and out of alignment, out of order and into darkness. I told you that in the beginning, the world was without form and void. That word void was chaos. He was putting things back into order and separating. To be into chaos and to be in darkness is to be out of the time of the Lord. That's why many people who look like they're moving, they're moving in their own will. They're doing their own thing and the Lord has not called them to do it. They're doing what everyone else is doing. They're doing what looks good and they're going to be damned by it. I don't care who get offended by this because I say, and I indict you by the word of God and by the fire of God. If you say you have the Holy Spirit too, and the Holy Spirit is telling me, and immediately I know that's wrong. Why don't you? Many people, and I will say this again, out of time and out of alignment. Many people have started acting. Oh, I heard you, Lord. Don't end up voiding your purpose because you bypass the process of God because you want it to be heard. Many of you going to go into your purpose before he process you and you going to fall. That's why you're making these mistakes. So this is for somebody. You're going to fall. You hear me? You are trying to move before he has processed you and you're going to reach your destiny and your purpose and you're going to fall because you move forth into your purpose without the processing of the fire of God. I said many of people want that tangible. They want to bypass the tangible fire that's within them so that they can move in the, the, the preceding fire that goes forth out of them. And that, that don't, it don't work like that. You must be properly processed. And that means you got to sit still sometime a long time and let him clean you up. He said he would baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Many of you ain't even been baptized with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of the heavenly language. And you out there dividing the word. Really? What do you think that fire is you're baptized with? Why do you think all of a sudden when you get saved, it seems like all hell break loose? Because what's being in you is being burnt up. 
That is what it is meant by obedience is better than sacrifice. What does this mean? Sacrifice means he got to catch you up. That means you're going to go through some turmoil. Obedience means you sat still and moved only when he told you to move. You didn't have to fight all these generational curses. You didn't have to fight all this sin and all the wrong mistakes that you made. So now he has to purge this out of you and you got to go through hard knocks so he can catch you up. That's sacrifice. He said obedience is better than sacrifice. That means you listen so he never has to go back to correct you. So you remain in the spirit of obedience. So you don't have to go through these hard knocks, knocks so that he can develop you for your purpose. That is what is meant by obedience is better than sacrifice. Many of you, and I heard that, are moving forth and going toward your purpose. And you're going to enter your purpose before he processed you and you will fall. You will think you just made some mistake when it was always coming. Because let me tell you. Yeah, yeah, I hear you, Lord. Just like winter, spring, summer, fall will come. If you are hard headed and not sensitive to his voice and don't allow him to prepare you in this season, the next season is still coming and you will move into that next season unprepared and you're getting further and further behind. And so it is. Summer is still coming, whether you're ready for it or not. Winter is still coming, whether you're ready for it or not. So what you don't allow him to prepare you in this season, you will not be ready in the next season and you will start over again. And this is how he wastes many times. Y'all better receive this word by the spirit of God. This is a warning to the body of Christ because you're doing it. And not only is that, it's witches in the midst. They're stirring this and you're jumping on the bandwagon. Move forth by the spirit of God. Yeah, we're going to get into this message because many of you have witches in your midst. Which is why they start to whisper about other people in your ear. That's called that Cajun incantation. The moment you connect with somebody preaching true godly word, you got witches saying, I don't know about her. Yet. And you listen, you will be judged just like they'll be judged. Catch that in the spirit. This is a woe. This is a warning. Some of y'all are marked in the spirit and you will be given over and you will keep going this way. And you're going to know. You're, I hear you, Lord. Strongholds in the mind. What is a stronghold in the mind? It's an a, a immediate argument. So the moment I say something, I teach something about fornication. Before you even think, you're like, well, God know my heart is stronghold. The moment I say something about the homosexuality, immediate defense, stronghold. The moment I say something about gossip, well, well, you know, no, I don't really think that was good. Stronghold. Because the argument comes immediately. You don't have to think about it. And many of you are going to get offended when you hear this because I've seen you over and over again until the Lord said, well, I don't care. I obey him. I will have to stand before him. You better receive this word and correction because the glory is coming. And whoever ain't prepared for this glory is going to be taken out by this glory. The Lord said to me that whoever don't obey the authority that is sent, they will be bowed by the force of that authority. Who is the force of the authority? Jesus is the force of the authority. He's sending me forth as the authority in this earth by way of his word. And those who don't hearken are going to be bowed by the force of the authority. And he said it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Fall on the rock and break yourself. Lest it fall on you and you be ground to powder. Break yourself. Because he was to break many. Hear this word. Hear it. Oh, 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 I repent, Lord. I should have been to did this message. I saw it more and it flamed up more than once. This is undeniable before I go into J1 to J1. Okay. The name of this message. Oh, whoa. To the Mimi preaching ministry. Your Mimi preachers. Mixing the holy with the profane. And before I read this scripture. Let me tell you what I see. Many of you sharing pictures to just show before and after. Calling it a testimony is a trick of the devil. Do you know how he uses imagery? Imagery is the hardest thing to get out of someone's mind. The imagery will override the word you put on that picture. So you put a half-naked woman with her legs gap, butt up in the earth, showing all this mess, and every man and woman is struggling in lust. You have just caused them to stumble. And then you put scripture on it, talking about this ain't a holy woman. This is what a holy woman looks like. But you didn't put this new. The Lord said, whoa, you have mixed the holy word with profane. You do not have to use a filthy, skin-tight, half-naked picture to say this is what a woman of God look like and this is what a woman of God, because you have caused them to stumble. The Lord did not tell you to do this. That is of the enemy. That is the sensuality that has replaced the anointing. I'm telling you what I saw, and that was it. I don't know who it is, but you know who you are selling it or you're sharing it on Facebook and everywhere. What she's so-called, this witch. 
giving a testimony where she's showing herself stripping with a butt crack twerking in the camera and all you see is a butt gapped over and bent over till you see her crack and on the other side she's standing there oh like she proud of it talking about the lord saved the devil is a lie that is of the devil and it has caused many to stumble because the only thing they're going to see is your tail that you put in their face. This is how the enemy works. The Lord says, woe to you, me, me preachers. He didn't call me, me ministries. He called us to deliver the word of God. Now, I'm not saying you can't share beautiful pictures with scripture, inspirational words. Share his word as much as you can. But we know all these half-naked, skin-tight, shopping bag, breast all up to her, blessed to, too, blessed to be stressed. Whoa, it is mixing the holy with the profane. And the enemy, I'm telling you because the Lord has told me, he is doing more with the pictures that y'all have attached to the scripture, that the scripture is literally being overrided. Because people who are struggling in their flesh and struggling with lust and struggling with self-esteem, they are falling by these ungodly memes mixing the holy with the profane. The Lord says, whoa, you ain't got to take this word. The meal has been said, served, and whether you choose to eat it, you will be judged by it because I'm obeying the Lord today. Y'all better take this correction because he is angry with it. People who are stumbling in lust, stumbling in pornography. I couldn't believe it. Crack, crotch showing from the back. Lips and all. You devil. The Lord ain't told you to share that. That ain't testimony. What are you witches in the midst? I suffer you not to live in the name of Christ Jesus. His fire has gone forth. I'm telling you what he showed me. Some witch that was following me. She fell dead off my balcony in the spirit realm. Whoa, it's going forth. Let me get to this scripture. Okay. I'm going to do Ezekiel. And the only scripture I'm going to go down what the Lord has given me. Because y'all get the gist of this message. It ain't got to be long to be strong. Y'all better hear the word of the Lord. He didn't tell you to do this. And the enemy is causing more to fall by these vulgar pictures. And you add a scripture to it. And people are stumbling. Breast out. Butt out. And the Holy Spirit will tell immediately. And if you say you have his spirit. Why don't you know this? I, I call you out. We who are spiritual in the spirit, spiritual in the, we who are spiritual in the spirit of meekness restore you. But y'all gotta receive the correction. Yeah, I hear you, Lord. Everything He reminded me to say. All of you who claim you hear His voice, this is how I know you don't. He said, "Cause if you have not heard my correction, you cannot hear my instructions." That's why you putting these pictures out here. Everybody clapping. It's popular. I don't care about popularity. I'm on His stage. And he has said he is pleased. And then I have to strive for the next time I please him. I don't need it from you. Because if you have the spirit, you're going to know this fire is real. Because the fire and the spirit bears record to itself. Let me get on this. Keep it. Keep it. Ezekiel 22. 26 through 28. Okay. Excuse me. Her priests have violated my law. And have profaned. Profaned my holy things. What's that? His word, you put no half-naked pictures and calling their testimony. They have put no difference between the holy and the profane. Neither have they showed the difference between the unclean. Neither have you showed the difference. You don't show the difference by putting it out there so the enemy can get that image in their mind. Now, let me, that, do y'all think Jesus told Mary Magdalene to stand on up here and take them clothes off like you had them? Get naked as you was when I caught you so I can show them what I did. Stand up here booty butt naked because they called her naked. They called her in the act of indulgery. So I need you to stand up here nude so I can tell them how you used to be. And then now I want you to go put your clothes on and tell them what I've done with you. Are y'all crazy? Neither have they showed the difference between the unclean and the clean. You showed the difference by your lifestyle, not by putting vulgar pictures of what you used to look like up. When those pictures are seductive, when those pictures are nude, when they got your butt popping, you devil. And y'all woe and shun this, shun it. And every one of you who has shared it, you better repent. I hear you. You better repent. Every one of you who has shirt a nude, mimi, half dressed, breast out, skin tight, and especially you those who show, those of you who shared that picture of that woman twerking her butt and saying you belong to the Lord, you better repent. You better repent. It's bringing forth fruit.
Everything you sow brings forth fruit. There's payment coming on that. You call some people to stumble in their heart. And they're struggling in their heart every day trying to get the image out of their mind. Lust it. And you caused it. Okay? Let me go on. Okay? The unclean and the clean have hid their eyes. They have hid their eyes from my Sabbaths and profaned among them. And the profane things among them. Okay, I'm going to still read, even though this ain't really part of what he's trying to get me to do. I like to read, I like to leave the whole context in. Verse 27, her princes in the midst thereof are, excuse me, are like ravenous wolves. They pray to the shed blood and they destroy souls to get dishonest gain. Y'all are destroying souls because people like these pictures. They like this so-called testimony. Amen. I see y'all thousands of them. Who has the spirit of God to call it out? Okay. And her prophets have daubed them with untempered mortar, seeing vanity and div divining lies unto them, saying that thus said the Lord God when the Lord has not spoken. What is it? I got a full message on daub with untempered mortar. I pray that I pray and beseech you to go listen to what that means. It's when you're telling them this is OK. OK, those of you who are not correcting people in sin, there's some of you who are, but you're still sharing this perverseness. It's not OK. When you pacify why they do what they do. I've had people reach out to me and tell me I used to do this. I used to do this. Don't judge. Well, you don't want me to. You don't want to be. You don't want to be made right if you don't want to be judged. Because even the Lord says when you are judged, you are chasing her of him. And then that considers you to be a son and daughter. He has to judge you first. We do judge between the holy and the profane. We do judge between what's right and wrong. And it is by the authority of God. So don't come telling me what you used to do if you don't want my judgment. Because judgment means this is what you did. This is what you need to do to be restored. That's what judgment means. It has nothing to do with condemnation. Let me keep going. Okay. The Lord has not given you me, me ministries. I heard that clear today. He didn't give you that. That's just what the world is doing. So it's popular. He didn't give you me, me ministry. Okay. Thus says the Lord. And I'm going to stop right with that. I just had Ezekiel 44, 21 through 23, because it speaks about the profane things. Once again, you can read that on your own time because I will do a blog. OK, let's look up with the nuggets of the anointing. I've said to you before as that you are promoting sin of sight. You're promoting sin of sight. He tells you to avoid that. He tells you not to give your attention to it. And simply because you put a scripture on it, it doesn't sanctify that picture. You have mixed the holy with the profane by putting the word of God on some half-dressed hooker. Or by sharing a twerking, stripping video and putting her on the other side saying, look at me now. That is not testimony. It was vulgar. Some testimony you just have to shove at your mouth. They will know by your holy conversation, your lifestyle, that you are changed. And those who used to see what you used to do will begin to say, boy, she ain't the same. Boy, she's so different now. She don't do what she used to do. That's your testimony. You have called sin of the heart. Okay? The anointing versus the sensuality. You are sensuality. So therefore, that sensuality has overridden the testimony. Because this is how the enemy works. You have aided and abetting in planting perverse imagery. You have aided and abetted in planting perverse imagery, says the Lord. Repent. I've seen a lot of y'all do it, and I don't care who get offended. This is from the Lord your God, if indeed you belong to him. This day will testify against you, whether you hear me or not. You can curse me behind closed doors, and I wouldn't advise it. Let's look up what profane means, because many of you say you don't deny him. All of this lines up with denying him, but let's start with profane first. In all that get and get understanding. Profane to violate the sacred character. He ain't putting nothing nude in nobody's face. Not even for a testimony. He ain't putting breasts up here to say, don't show these. Okay, turn around, bend over and spread them. Don't show this. Do you see what you're doing? And you put this scripture across it and think it's, I'll, I'll put a call it a testimony and call it good. Next definition. To corrupt morally or by interpretants or sensuality. You have corrupt his word with sensuality images. But you have his spirit. Yes, I'm indicting you by the spirit of God. Because he said, many say that they've heard me. But if they have not heard my correction, they cannot 
Here are my instructions. Okay? Next definition. Not holy because of unconsecrated, impure, and defilement. You can't put a defiled imagery and a defiled life and put scripture or put testimony and think it becomes holy. This was a trick of the enemy. And many have fell for it. You ain't never saw me share no half naked picture and put no scripture on it. Because the Lord tells me, clear, immediate I know that's wrong. This is proof that I tell you, many of you are moving forth before he has processed you. And you got a fall coming. Sit still. And let him purge out the dross out of your spirit before you go forth in the fire of God. Because you're going forth before he has sent you forth. And it will not be successful. Okay? Next definition. Grossly irreverent toward what is held sacred. That is a gross irrelevance toward what is held sacred. That is held sacred. And you have defiled it by putting scripture across it and call it testimony while you got nude women. Even y'all who share a picture about a strong man hold their wife up and all her butt hanging out. She booty butt naked and you put scripture across it. Whoa. We calling it all out. I'm already hated without a cause. Get in line. Give me my hate up front. All y'all who say y'all belong to the Lord, you got hate coming. So take it on up front. Get over it. Get your hate up front. Let's go to the next definition. Characterized by profanity or cursing. You have characterized Christ by profanity, putting scripture on nude pictures, half dress hookers, and twerking videos, and saying, this is what the Lord has done. Causing brothers and sisters to stumble in their heart. Wagging off at night because they can't get the image that you, I've said it, I said it. Wagging off and touching themselves at night because they can't get the image that you put before them out of their mind. Whoa. That's what's been happening. I know it. That's what's been happening with what you've been sharing. Let's go to what deny mean. How deny is directly correlated and connected to profaned. You have denied him openly. You have openly denied Christ by sharing these perverted memories. Uh, and let me tell you how. They, 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 they heart is far from me, though they say it with their mouth. This tells me what's in your heart. Are you unsure of these things? You would know by the spirit that it is wrong. Let me check this time. No, I don't care about time. Because the Lord said those who are called to hear this word, go hear this word. Every word he sends to me. He said he would keep me in a constant state of what he is doing and saying. That I have a ministry that is rhema word. Distributor of the revelation. Distributor of the release. Distributor of the truth. And I believe him. He has been keeping me up with the 411. Which means relevant truth now. And this is what's pressing now. Because many are in trouble right about now. Okay. Deny. The definition of deny. To refuse to let have. To deny oneself something. To refuse to let him have his way. You ain't being led by him or you wouldn't do this. To deny oneself something, to restrain, to especially from indulging in some pleasure. And we know you deny yourself. Present your bodies as living sacrifice. You deny yourself the way you used to live, the things you used to eat. You deny yourself the people you go around. Sometimes you fast, you deny yourself food, or you fast and deny yourself TV. This is all things that cause you to grow in Christ and grow into maturity. And until you realize that we we li fasting is a lifestyle, whether it's TV, whether it's people, whether it's media, whether it's things. He said, when you fast, fasting is a lifestyle, whether it's a meal a day, a whole meal days, it should be some form of fasting. And that is how you keep under the flesh. You train it like a boxer. You keep the flesh under. You lay off the weights that so easily beset you. That's why many won't be able to take off. That's a whole nother message. The weight is besetting you. And when, when he says, come up hither, you won't be able to soar. You are beset it by sin. Let me stay on course. The next definition. To refuse to grant as petition or request. Seek him in all your ways. And if you saw him about these memes, he would have told you. And for those of you who have the Holy Spirit and you know you spent time and you're developing, you wouldn't have had to ask him this. Because you're listening to him. You knew that was wrong off the cuff. And if you shared it anyway... You need to sit still. I will not back down. You need to sit still because the spirit would have told you. Flat. You would have known that what this is doing to people. Okay? To declare untrue or contradict. To declare untrue or contradict. That's what deny mean. To contradict him. Jesus wasn't putting no naked picture out there and put a scripture on it. Or had nobody staring there naked while he delivered a word. And this is who she is in the flesh and this is who she used to be. Now go get dressed. Let me tell you what I did with you. To contradict. 
to refuse to accept or believe, be holy, and not in your way of being holy, his way. Would he put that before somebody's eyes? No, he would not. Okay? Refuse to recognize or acknowledge. You're not recognizing or acknowledging him or you would know to do, not to do it. I don't care what your title is. I don't care who you call yourself to be. You have erred in this inference. You have erred in this action. You have erred in this judgment. Doesn't mean you did you bad all around, but you have erred in this. We all got something we got to be corrected in. And those of you who are doing this, you have erred in this. Repent. Because you have called brothers and sisters, I'm telling y'all what you, you have called people to lust in their heart and they have had to fight to get those images out their mind. Okay? To contradict, to be in contradiction with, to deny the truth of, to prove negative or show to be false. You are making him seem negative because all of us who know, the people are looking like, how you put scripture on stuff like this? Why are they showing these booty videos? This is a, you are causing those that don't even know him to say, what is this? Is this Jesus? So they turn away because of you. They blaspheme him through you. <sighs> Denying Jesus in your walk and works, doing what he would not do, the acts and omission. I'm saying that again. You have denied Jesus in your walk and in your works, doing what he would not do, your acts and and your omissions. So when you choose not to say something, you're doing what he wouldn't do. And you're saying and sharing these kind of things, he would not do that. That is not of God and by the spirit you would know it. Titus 1 verse 16. They have professed that they know God. But in works, they deny him. Being abominable, that is abominable. And disobedient. It got to be disobedient because you didn't seek him on it. Because if you saw him on it, he would have told you no. He is not the author of confusion. I know it's no by the spirit of God. So if you have his spirit, you're going to know it's no too. They're being disobedient and unto every good work they are reprobate. Unto every good work you are becoming reprobate. You have denied him in works. What does that mean? That means those of you who are not working at all. Those of you who are moving when he ain't told you to move. Those of you who are working when he ain't sent you yet. You have to sit still first. And those of you who are sharing and doing things he wouldn't do. He would not show no nude Mimi or any Mimi that's showing blam, blam, pow, brass, butt, pop. You can't even think. You can't even see the scripture. Women won't even be the scripture because women getting seduced by it too. Spirit of lust and perversion. And you put scripture on it and call it testimony. And the Lord says no. He wouldn't let me bypass this anymore. And I repent for I believe I was supposed to deliver it even sooner. But this could not pass. He says evil communication corrupt go. Let me back up. This will be the results of your presumptuous preaching. Ezekiel 22 and 31. Therefore, have I poured out my indignation upon them. I have consumed them with the fire of my life. Their own way have I recompensed up on their heads, said the Lord. What y'all doing is causing people to storm up. Go hit you all at once if you don't repent. I you better receive this word. This will be the result of this presumptuous preaching. This will be the result of the Mimi preachers. This will be the result of the mixing the holy and the profane, whether it is written or with picture or even with words or even with your life. This will be the result. Evil communications corrupt good manner. What is communication? Lord, I should have looked that word up. Communication can be touch, taste, smell, vibration, sight, sound, sight. Sight, sight, communication, sin by sight. Evil communication, corrupt good manner. That's an evil communication. Putting a half-dressed, skin-tight, booty shorts, all the humps and bumps showing, and then putting scripture on it. You've called them to stumble. Many people are stumbling in lust because the enemy will use that image and you have to do some serious warfare to get it out your head. And those who are not as spiritual, they have to fight even harder. That's why you see all these commercials and pop homosexuality, pop two women, pop two men, pop breast out, pop butt right on the screen. Because all it takes is a second for that image to be in your mind. By way of the spirit, why don't you know this? 1 Corinthians 15, 32 to 34. If after the manner of men I have fought with beast and Ephesus, what advantage it, what advantage it me? If the dead rise not, 
let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die. He basically saying if everything I'm preaching is wrong, then we might as well just party and kick it and eat and drink and kick it till we die. Verse 33, be not deceived. Evil communication corrupt good manners. Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. This is the word of the Lord. I won't back down. Don't care who don't like me. People already don't like me for nothing. And anybody who knows me know how loving I am. Just because I deliver this word like this ain't got nothing to do with how I'm at home. My husband will tell you that. Quite goofy and funny. But the Lord doesn't change your character when he causes you. He changes and turns it in you, but he don't take your funniness and your laughter and your joy. And if you're goofy, you're going to still be goofy. If you like to crack jokes, you're going to still like to crack jokes. That's what it is. I'm going to read that again. Because this is it. Be not deceived. For evil communication corrupt good manners. Awake to righteousness. This is the noun word. Awake to righteousness. For that evil communication of the me me is corrupting good manners. And it is causing brothers and sisters to stumble and their body stumble and lust to be open to demonic forces. Because once they start to think it, once it's in their heart and they're fighting the thought, incubus is in succubus because it can even attack them in the night. Because it's there. The seed is there. Okay? Awake to righteousness and sin not. That's sin. Like it or not, them naked memes are sin. Them naked twerking videos with scripture next to it and testimony is sin. Holy and the profane. And sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. That's the knowledge of God. The knowledge of God tells you not to do that. I speak this to your shame. He said you should know better. I speak this to your shame. So all those you, you who shell her sharing memes with half-naked women, half-naked men, and talking about how family hold together and they booty butt naked, lift them up in the air, and all you see is button breasts with chains and, and the angel of God falling down with scripture. I speak this to your shame. Sharing a twerking video with her butt spread out, the video right next to her before and after the Lord saved me. I speak this to your shame. This is a word from the Lord. Warning, guard your hearts, for out of it flows the issues of life. Everything that you see in your life now came out of your heart. Only what is in you presents before you. That's why he said, as a man, so a man think it, as he believe it. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issue of life. What is the issue? Just like he calls a man when his seed comes out to make a baby an issue. You are issuing it out of you. Okay. Another scripture that confirms this. Don't eat sweet water and bitter water. That's sweet and bitter water. Holy and profane. Do a fountain send forth the same place, sweet and bitter water? You got the sweet word of God with some bitter vulgarity whoredom on it. And calling it testimony. Let me keep going. How contamination and drought comes. This is spiritual contamination. The holy and the profane. He will spew you out. This is lukewarmness because you have not moved by the knowledge of God. Back to verse 23. Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God and I speak this to your shame. Okay. Proverbs 25 and 26. A righteous man falling down before the wicked is as troubled fountain and corrupted spring. Catch this. A righteous man falling down. Falling down before the wicked is a troublesome fountain and a corrupted spring. Let me read this in the Amplified. A like a muddy fountain and a polluted spring. You have polluted springs. Is a righteous man who yields and compromises his integrity before the wicked. You have yielded and compromised your integrity before the wicked. Because a lot of people were wicked people on Facebook, Instagram. And because you're sharing this, even they know. Because the devil tell them, look at that. Look at them Christians. Hey, you know, because the devil going to start. Because that's how he is. Let them, let us wicked. This ain't, this ain't what Christianity is. You have muddied them. So therefore, you have fallen before the wicked. Okay? Let me move. Progressive fall. All falls are progressive. Pay attention. You are being given over. This is the strong deception frequency. People will not all of a sudden be deceived when this frequency comes. You are being turned over to it now by moving and doing your own thing. You're being given over. That's why when this strong delusion comes, people are going to believe it. Because they're progressively being given over now. They're progressively falling. Just like we are progressively being washed and cleansed and saved. We are progressively from faith to faith, glory to glory, being transformed into his image. You progressively fall. That's how fur the Lord is. You don't make one mistake and you damned. You are falling. It takes constant beating against the wall and rebellion. That's how good he is. Woo. Psalms 1 verse... Psalms 1, verse 1 through 4. And let's read that from left to right. That's the 411. 
Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. You first start off walking. Excuse me. Nor standeth in the way of sinners. Now you ain't even walking. You just standing still. Idle. Nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Now you sitting with the scornful. You were walking in the Lord. Well, he tells us to run anyway. Not walk. He said run. He said it's tell you to fall. And now you sitting in the seat of the scornful. Do you know when you sitting in the seat of the scornful? Do you know when you walking in the council of the ungodly? Because when they show their me means that's the that's the ungodly council. That's council. When you share a message, you are you are counseling, and that's the counsel of the ungodly. Okay. Delight in the law of the Lord and meditate. I want y'all to read the rest of that. You delight in the law of the Lord and meditate in the day and night. You won't make these kind of mistakes. That you will be planted, bringing forth fruit. And that's verse two and three through four. Read that on your own time. Progressive. Fall. You're walking, then you're standing, then you're sitting. You'll become comfortable in it. Okay? Leaves wither for lack of water. Okay? What is water? The word. And the wells. The contaminated get dry, making them as chaff. So you get contaminated, then you dry up. Then you become as draft and then you are blown away of the wind. What wind? The Holy Spirit. You are as chaff before the wind because you are dry. You are not watered with the word. And what causes drought? The lack of rain of word. Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, not just the written word. He is still talking. That is how you are watered. And then lack of uh, rain causes drought and it causes lack of flow and therefore contamination. Therefore, you are dry and therefore you are withered and you are driven with the wind and tossed. You are as chaff before the wind. Okay. The decrease in flow threatens drought. What's the flow? The word of God. I'm going to keep saying this. The flow of the river cleanses. The flow of the rivers cleanses. When water is stagnated is when bacteria comes. Most of you have been stagnated through your ill acts. Once you start moving in error like this, you can do what you want. You are not fruitful. You have got to repent from this. Okay? Let me go on because I got a, little, a few other notes there, but I'm going to put them for the uh, blog and you have to read it on your own time. Study to show your own self approved. Take this word in and the Holy Spirit is the elaborator of it. That's what study means. Okay. There is a trade. There is a cost. Salvation is not free. He paid for us to enter into the kingdom, but the cost in our flesh here. Lay your body down. You don't get to go your own way. You don't get to do your own things. You don't get to say what you want to say. You don't get to be presumptuous nor procrastinate. Present your body as a living sacrifice. Die to self. Deny you at all times. Train your body like a boxer. Because sin is at the door. And what you don't master will master you. You better love correction. Because I perceive it. Many don't like correction. Even people that's very close to me. I know I said what the Lord said. And I know they didn't receive it. And you still pray for them. Because the Lord going to deal with that. Because they hit some hard knocks they didn't have to hit. You better learn a little correction. When you hear that word minister to you, say, Lord, because he loves you. Okay? Because if you die in it, that's it. There is a word and there is light. Okay? Let me explain to you what I mean by this. Many people go to church. They go to the, this is the way we go to church, go on Sunday. And they don't do anything but go there and receive the word. And when they leave, many of them have lost their blessing before they even left the house of God. Because they go right out to their car and turn on Perverse music, turn on the uh, booty music, turn on the rap ch uh, chanting incantations. Because that's all that's going on with this music. You're being indoctrinated. You are being implanted with things from the dark kingdom by this vulgar music. So you come straight out of the church house and you put on some worldly music. You're being robbed of the word already. Okay? The light is when the word give the, the word goes through you like it's being ministered and it, it gives revelation and correction and rebuke and restoration. It becomes the light of God. Okay? Light illuminates for you a choice. Many will choose darkness. I know y'all think many people gonna go to hell, they're gonna choose this darkness. Just like I'm now presenting to you a choice because I'm telling you what the word of the Lord is and you're going to choose to keep doing what you're doing or are you going to choose to repent and receive say Lord I take that correction I repent help me to be better many will choose darkness my job as a minister to you is to minister the word of God because the word of God illuminates to you a choice and many people will choose darkness they won't be tricked they will choose darkness because they chose not to retain him in their knowledge so eventually he gives them over to their own ways 
They chose darkness. Light always exposes darkness. We have spiritual and physical eyes, which is why a lot of people can't stand you for no reason because that spiritual light is hurting their spiritual eyes because they're spiritual. Their, their, their soul is in darkness. So when you're illuminated in the spirit, you're hurting their spiritual eyes and they, they don't even know why they don't like you. They just don't like you because their spiritual eyes are hurt. It's shining the light on them. He said, whatever is light does make and the word will make manifest darkness. This is manifesting some darkness that's still in you. So some of y'all will have a problem with this. You're going to contend with the Lord, not me. I'm not concerned. You contended with him, not me. You boxed in with him, not me. I'm but a vessel of honor. These are his words. Okay? Many love you for your darkness, not the light, for your light exposes them. Many of people have a problem with you when you stand like I'm standing now. But as long as everybody's agreeing, I check people out that everybody likes everybody who say the same thing they say. Ezekiel, up, oh, Jeremiah, Elijah, he stood by himself. It was him against 850 of Jezebel's prophets. Sometimes you're going to be the only one right and you're going to have to know it. That's how you're going to be letting many of them fail the test. It's going out right now. That should tell you consensus don't, consensus don't mean it's right. Just because there's more people doing it don't mean that's right. They love you for the darkness in you. I watch people. They click up and they join together because everybody's saying the same thing, even though it's wrong. It takes bravery to stand out. Do what you do. The righteous are as bold as lions. This is a word from the Lord. The light in you makes manifest the darkness in them and they hate you without a cause and you ain't done nothing wrong. Standing out against these memes because the Lord has spoken on this. Okay? Let me go down here. I'm going to put this in the uh, uh, scriptures. Why you need to be led is because there is only one way. That's Christ. But there are paths on that way. So you may go this way, this day, this day, this way. That's your paths. And he said, acknowledge him in all your ways and he will direct your paths. Not one. Paths, plural. One way, many paths along that way, which is Christ. Because when you are off the path, you are out of order, out of timing, out of alignment. The definition of the word path is an established road of travel and access. Which means when you're off the path, you have no access. And those of you sharing these memes, you are off the path. Repent. He said, I didn't call him to know. I heard him put his day early a.m. morning. I have not called no me me ministries. He will use exactly what you're doing. And he did. Proverbs 3 and 6. In all thy ways acknowledge him that he will direct your paths. I'm going to read it in Amplified. In all your ways know and acknowledge and recognize him and he will make your path straight and smooth removing obstacles that block your way. Okay? You need to do this by faith and trust him. Will the Lord find that kind of faith when he get her? Luke 18 and 8. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. He will avenge all those who do you wrong. Nevertheless, when the son of man cometh, shall he find faith in the earth? He needs to find faith in you by the time he returns. And if you can't receive correction, you none of his. I say that with great boldness. If you can't receive correction, you don't belong to the Lord. You a babe or either you are extreme babe because babes got a problem with correction. Babes, you got to tell them what to eat. Babes, you got to tell them what's not good for them. I've given that example. Because I had to repent. I had received messages that I knew were very meaty and good. And I started sharing them with people. And this is as I was going. That everybody can't eat what you eat. Because they are not developed in the spirit enough. They don't know what to spit out. I'm going to use the same example. If you put a baby, a toddler, with two teeth in the front. And you got mashed potatoes right here, green beans, and chunks of steak. He don't know he ain't supposed to eat that steak. He going to choke. But me, I can be listening to it no matter how good a minister they are. Nobody has it 100% right. We are continually growing. Iron sharpens iron. That's why he said a friend is always pleased with you. But a brother, catch this, a brother or sister is five verses. So if you want to them, they ain't never had nobody say, girl, that's wrong. Because I've told somebody that's pride, that's this, and they didn't receive it. A brother and sister is going to correct you. A friend going to always tell you you're right. A brother and sister going to challenge you. And you may not like it. A brother is born for adversity. Look that up. It's in the scripture. A brother is born for adversity. They sharpen you. They make you. And that's why people like to talk about this 202 that's going to be sent out. He's sending them out by twos. Why did he send them out by twos? To hold one another accountable. Not because you got more power. He's enough. 
Y'all hold one another accountable in the flesh. That's why he gonna send y'all two by two. So you can check them when they get out of order. If it wasn't necessary, why would he do it? He's purposeful. He don't waste time. When I heard word, the Holy Spirit was like, don't chew that. That's not me. Spit that out. That's okay. That's more of their opinion. I didn't say that. But you put a plate before a babe, they don't know what to spit out. They get contaminated, they choke and die. Y'all better take this message before the Lord. I know what the Lord told me. He said, I didn't call no Mimi Ministries. Those of you who have shared these pictures, name of this message again, woe to the Mimi Preaching Ministries, mixing the holy with the profane. For you have caused many to sin in their heart by the sin of sight, putting a perverted picture before them and putting scripture on it. And many have had to go back and struggle in their flesh because of what you put out there when that's not what the Lord told you to do. And the Spirit of God would tell you not to do that. Repent. It's not my concern whether you receive this or not. It is signed, sealed, and delivered. And you will be marked. Even by scrolling past it, trying not to hurt because you know you didn't done it. I want y'all to say, uh -huh. I want y'all to take this. Even those of you who are no gonna pass this by, because you know you've done it, so you're gonna try not to hear this word, thinking it's gonna cleanse you. No, it goes forth against you whether you listen to this or not. Believe that. Take this word before the Lord, for I know it is of the word of God, for I have to stand before him too. He nullified me with the word continually first, because I the only way I'm gonna deliver it in spirit, spirit and in truth and in power is the fact that he is tired, taking the time to allow him to purge me. You after you after you. That's why I said so many people got saved. You wanna know how long I sat still before he let me minister? Don't even get me started. Anyway, I love you. I pray this blesses you. Please share this. This is so serious, y'all. Many of y'all about to get given over. And those of you who don't know the Lord, I beseech you by the mercies of God, be ye reconciled. There is no other way. Those of you who have been drugged back into the law, I'm going to tell you again what the Lord told me. Even those who performed the law perfectly during those days could only get Abraham bosom. And Abraham bosom was in the earth. And once he took them out, hell enlarged himself. So either you go going by way of Christ Jesus by faith through grace or you're going to hell because Abraham bosom is no longer there. And only those who touched the righteousness perfect got the, go the righteousness of the law by perfect, perfect got to go to Abraham bosom. There's no other way but Christ now. Because you only get justified through Christ, by grace, through faith. And that's how you go up into the third heaven where the Lord is. Other than that, you had to be down in Abraham's bosom, which was in the earth, and it's no longer there. Don't let nobody bring you out of your grace. Grace be with you, and I love you all. Thank you for joining us today on Preach. Be a voice, not an echo. We pray that you were encouraged and empowered by today's message. Until next time, we encourage you to hang on to God's unchanging hand and preach. Grace be with you.